My name is um, <clears throat> Chester Kahn. Uh, my native um, name is uh, Nat El Chaya. And um, I'm from uh, a place, Hauk, Arizona, which is on the Navajo or Diné Reservation. Some people call this Navajo. But it's in Arizona where I live. I was born and raised at Pine Springs, Arizona, which is right there. Um, when I was um, uh, growing up uh, under the, on the Navajo Reservation, it was uh, really beautiful, you know, looking back now, um, how we used to live. In those days, um, we uh, lived what we call traditional way of life, almost totally, maybe 95% of our lives, uh, my family and extended family and the Navajo people. <clears throat> lived um, uh, almost 100% traditional way. In other words, we didn't depend on the supermarkets, we didn't depend on uh, all these uh, moderation, modern things that we have today. There was We didn't have electricity, no running water. We went to the spring nearby to haul water with the wagon about once a, once a week, you know, when the barrels are empty, we load it up on the wagon and take it over to the spring and fill them up and bring them back. And then we had a lot of sheep, a lot of uh, maybe over 200 sheep, uh, our family, immediate family. And that was sort of the central uh, economy because uh, <clears throat> in the springtime um, we get lots of lambs and in the fall we sell them to the trading post not very far away. And then we use the, the meat, the mutton, to eat when, when we need uh, to eat, uh, you know, when we, uh, what is necessary to butcher sheep is what we did. And then we planted live um, uh, food, like vegetables, mostly to potatoes and beans and whatnot, every spring. And in the fall, we had a lot of harvest and we had a great big cellar where we store them for the winter uh, so this was the way of life and uh, we didn't have the electricity like I say so we had to build a fire three times a day to cook and the open fire even in the summer when it's hot we build a fire at noontime so our mother could cook and um, so everything was sort of a natural way of life and it wasn't like t what we have today Today we have uh, so many things that have come about. Uh, some are good, some are not good. Like almost every home today has a television. And uh, I guess everybody knows about television, what comes through there. And uh, almost every home today on these reservations have uh, tele um, electricity and all the modern way of life. In the early days, we had what we call, we live in what we call Hogan, which is um, a round structure made out of logs or sometimes stone and then dome top. They always face the east because the old traditional teachings say we've got everything has, all the homes have to face the east because that's where the sun comes every morning and where the, uh, the spirit the energy, uh, beautiful energy we call spirit, comes. And they say toward east, that's where the, the holy people live. And these were, there we have many different teachings like that that we, that we used. And we were told to run every morning uh, when, when we were growing up. And in the, in the, before the sun comes up, we were... Uh, our <clears throat> our relatives tell us to get up early in the morning um, because the teaching goes that um, all the good good things, if you want to live good, if you want to live a healthy life, a good life, spiritual life, you have to live that way. And the time to get up is before the sun comes up. So everybody got up before the sun came up. Because they said after the sun rises, all these other things are all all around them. 
the negative things, negative energy, negative uh, spirits, so to speak. So that's how we grew up uh, with those kinds of teachings. And we had uh, a lot of different ceremonies also. Uh, one of the main ones is what we call beauty way ceremony, where uh, t for two days the, the family and the immediate family and friends come together for two days. And there's what we call medicine men who are trained to conduct these ceremonies. This beauty way ceremony was a, is the central or a, was a central part of our lives in those days. And for two days, we there's a, the family sponsors it, and they have a person who is the central part of it, who sits in uh, during these uh, different activities that goes on during the day, and the two nights. The first night is a protect, uh, they have a, what they call protection prayers. So we go through that process through the prayers uh, late in the evening and at dawn. Prayers are said. And then during the day, they call it the purification day, where the people come and wash, go through this process of cleansing the body. And of course, you clean your mind too in the process and clean your spirit. And then that evening, that night, everybody who wants to stay up all night and chant and sing all night. And these songs are, have been brought down through the centuries from generation to generation. And the story goes that uh, these chants and prayers and songs have been given to us by the holy people from way back. Nobody, nobody knows when, but uh, how long ago, but we, uh, we, we still have them today. We still practice, but it's diminished quite a bit since that time when I was little. And so that's uh, just an example of a ceremony, one ceremony. And then uh, for two days, we, we, there's love and unity and really um, being uh, what I call a true human being, a spiritual being, where you really go through that experience. And then you go on. And then the rest of the ceremonies are mostly um, healing. When somebody is sick, when somebody, uh, when somebody needs help, there are different ceremonies for different purposes, for different illnesses. And these medicine men are trained in these various ceremonies to conduct these ceremonies uh, to keep people healthy and strong and happy. But it brings the, the families and the communities together for one day, two days, five days. The longest ceremonies we have is uh, two of them left today. They're nine-day ceremonies. And in, this, in these times, there's a lot of interaction, a lot of social activities, dancing, and then, of course, the counseling to try to help the younger generation, the elders counsel the, the youth and everybody how to live and how to act and how to behave on the individual basis as well as collectively. So all these things are brought together, different portions, different aspects of life, so that one lives and the family lives and the community lives in, in harmony and in balance and in peace. 